you know, because we're almost there. Who knows, but I, I don't want to go there. You know, I'd rather put myself on the other side here. And I'll, I'll show you why. Uh, do this graph. Specialists, on the other hand, um, you know, if you got a friend who's a doctor, a nurse, uh, an engineer, something like that, you might be looking up to them right now and saying, wow, I'd like to make as much money as they do. Well, just remember this, okay? <laughs> they get their max tax rate is 45 to at least 50% of their income. And it, it varies depending on how much they make. But I can tell you right now, most of your specialists like doctors, lawyers, and attorneys, um, they're usually making like 100, 100 grand, 200, 250,000 on up. Okay? Now here's the problem though with that. They're taxed at 45 to 50%. So are you willing to make 100 grand? And then get 50% of it taken away from me. Now you're only making 50. So you're, you're taxed even more than, than these guys, the employees. That's not fair. That's not right. You know? And these guys right here are the ones going for eight years to school. Spending 100 grand on, on uh, student loans. These are smart people. They, they really are. They're the brightest minds here in America. And they're getting taxed at 45 to 50 percent. Like it's almost like a slap on the hand for um, trying to do the right thing. So you're told. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> moving on here. We'll go with the, uh, excuse me, we'll, we'll move on with the business owner. Um, they're taxed at 15 to 20 percent. All right. The reason why is because they have write offs. Um, you know, they can write off their car, they can write off their gas for their car, they can write off a portion of their phone bill, they can write off their rent or a portion of it. Um, so they can reduce a lot of the money that they would have to pay on taxes and get it back, all right, from doing tax write-offs. The other cool thing is uh, normally when you add all that up on tax write-offs and, and whatnot, because they own a business, um, they're employing other people. All right, so they're putting food on the tables for other families. They're doing what uh, the government really honestly doesn't want to do, is take care of everybody. They don't want to do that. It costs too much money, and we're, we're seeing that right now in the economy. All right. So if you're a business owner, congrats to you, man. Hats off to you, because we need more people like that. And I think they're here soon we're going to see a a major uh, paradigm shift or transition where people start taking control of their financial future and start building on their own dreams because this is not working. And it's it, all you have to do is just look at the stock market, look at the earnings on corporations out there. Uh, you know, it, it's needed, but it's, it's not where you want to be. If you're trying to achieve financial independence, uh, independence and financial freedom. You do not want to be on this side. Okay? Investors, on the other hand, they'll, guys, they get taxed at like 0 to 20% at the most. A lot of them don't even really pay that much. Uh, and the reason why, again, is because <laughs> you have advantages uh, being a, a business owner or an investor. So investors are real similar to business owners because they're handing over money uh, to businesses um, so that they can they can keep it funded. Okay? So like when you invest in a company on the stock market, you are technically a business owner, a company owner. You own a portion of that company. Alright? And you're helping that company grow. What do you think they do with your money? You know, they hire more people, uh, it, it helps pay salaries, expenses, operating expenses, um, and those are things that, you know, are on their financial statements, their income statements, and stuff like that. So being an investor is, I, honestly, I think it's better than uh, being a business owner because with a business owner, you're trading resources and people for money, and as an investor, you're trading your money for more money. Okay, so there's less overhead. You don't have to worry about the uh, the business going under. 
as much. I mean, you do because that's that's a real threat to your money. But um, you're letting everybody else do the work, okay? And so over here, there's you're not trading your time. It's the business owner or the business owner that might possibly be trading his time, but if he's established and he knows what he's doing. He can utilize smarter people to do the jobs for him. So again, you're you're at a better advantage. Um, you know, just looking at it. So those are those are things to consider. Uh, you know, for yourself when it comes to financial independence and financial freedom. Just know the different playing fields that you can be on. Because guys, I'm telling you, <laughs> I made the transition from an employee over to an investor. And you can be on both sides of the field, all right? There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, currently, for myself, I'm still an employee because I want to work. But I'm an investor, too, so I'm on both sides of the playing field, all right? And uh, really, that's, that's what it comes down to. Because time is the most valuable commodity that you have. Once it's gone, you can't get it back. Money can't buy time back. So it makes perfect sense. Why are you going to spend your entire life working for someone else? You're going to waste your life away. And if, if you're doing that and you want to do it, you might want to be on a different playing field. That way um, you have the choice. Okay? So like right now, for instance, with myself, the only reason why I'm working is because I want to. I don't have to work. Alright? And it's because I saved up enough cash to where I could live comfortably because I live below my means. Alright? I could live comfortably, pay all my bills, and they're covered for probably the next two and a half to three years at least. At least. That's how much liquid cash I put aside and have prepared, you know, so that if I do lose a job or whatever, I'm set. Okay? My security blanket is set. My housing, my cars, my car insurance, everything is covered. And that's where you want to be. That's where you want to start out, at least. That's, uh, there's, there's three different buckets. Okay? We'll go over there, those in detail in a later video, but it's uh, Tony Robbins breaks it down in his asset allocation. There's three buckets you want to be in. Uh, for investing, uh, it's your security bucket, your growth bucket, and your dream bucket. Okay, what I just talked about though with your money, your liquid cash, and then getting your money working for you, uh, so you don't have to continue trading your time for a dollar bill. That's the first step that goes into your security bucket. All right, so uh, just remember that and uh, try to make that transition over to the uh, the other side of the cash flow quadrant here because man I'm telling you once you've got this going or a business going and you're getting you know momentum and traction it'll take off and there's something called the power of compounding and I've talked about it in a couple other videos John D. Rockefeller uh, was really really um, he was very very focused on compounding with investing that's what you're doing is compounding and it's the most powerful thing in the world. It really is. There's nothing that's, it's like an unstoppable force, basically. There's nothing that can stop it once it gets going. So if you if you invest over here and you're an investor or you own a business, you can start compounding resources, other companies, people, because it takes people to create money. All right, so just keep that in mind. It's kind of a paradigm shift. It's a different way of thinking. All right. Anyways, I'm done talking. Uh, hope, hopefully that was uh, educational for you. And um, again, I'll go over in, in a, uh, another video and I'll start filling you in in detail um, the different uh, buckets, what what you can put in those, and uh, get you get you going so that you got security. You know, so that you can become financially independent, because that's the that's the goal, guys. You don't want to work till you're 75 years old. You know, 
because you just don't. You're going to miss out on so much in life. And there's more to life than just making money. All right? Anyways, good talking to you guys again. Peace out.